Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world and the thing that fantasies are made of. Now, think about being an ambitious skier and saying to yourself, I'm going to put on the skis and I'm going to go from the top all the way down to sea level. I'm not going to do it just once, but 11 times in 10 hours. Hi everybody, I'm David Sparks. Welcome to this edition of Snow Adventures. And the reference to Mount Everest, well, we're going to be doing the equivalent of that today. We're going to travel to the Big Sky Ski and Summer Resort in Big Sky, Montana to join professional skier and member of our Snow Adventures ski team as he attempts to break the existing world record for most vertical feet skied in a 12-hour period. That's right, a new world record for skiing right here on Snow Adventures. Plus, we're going to learn more about the new shaped skis in this week's Tech Tip. That is all coming your way right now, right here on Snow Adventures. So, let's get going. This adventure takes us to the Big Sky Ski and Summer Resort in Big Sky, Montana. Big Sky lies just outside of Yellowstone National Park in southwestern Montana, approximately 40 miles south of Bozeman. We're here for a world record attempt at the most vertical feet skied in a 12-hour period. The existing world record? 297,640 feet. Now, how far is that? Well, let's just say this. It's a long way. Come on for the ride. And what a ride it's going to be, at least for Rusty Squire, the man attempting to break the world record. In order to be successful, Rusty must complete one run every three minutes and maintain this pace for 10 grueling hours. Rusty's a former three-time All-American and member of the U.S. ski team. Plus, has competed in several endurance ski events. And he is not doing this just to get his name in the record books or add another title to his belt. The goal today is to raise money for kids with cancer. The entire purpose of this event is to raise a scholarship fund for a good friend of mine named DJ Appleman. Now, DJ died last year of cancer. And prior to his death, while he was going through all sorts of chemotherapy treatment and suffering all sorts of pain, DJ did a tour called the Harley That Healed. And through the Harley that healed, DJ went to cities all over the West Coast, taking young kids out for rides on his Harley, taking them to basketball games, doing things with them that were fun, to try and instill the human spirit in them. And he was trying to instill this spirit, knowing that he had very limited time left to live. I have a tremendous amount of respect for that, and the only reason I came out to do this event was in DJ's honor and memory. All the money raised from this event goes directly into the Cancer Kids Scholarship Fund. What the Cancer Kids Scholarship Fund does is it brings kids with cancer to Montana to participate in therapeutic recreation camps. They do whitewater rafting, horseback riding, skiing, all sorts of fun outdoor activities in the beautiful setting that's Montana. Pulling off an event like this takes intricate teamwork. Today there are over 60 volunteers on hand, making sure everything goes smoothly, from waxing skis to calculating statistics. We're waxing every single pair of skis that Rusty is running on. And it's working well so far. Right now, I'm just structuring the bases, putting a little grooves in the bottom so that they'll break the tension of the snow a little bit. Usually don't hear popping and snapping when you wax skis, but we're doing it outside, so that's what's going down. The reason we're waxing them every time is so that Rusty can set the fastest world record in the planet. And we're going to do it. Right now we're on pace, doing really well. Also, on these skis, we brush in white powder called Sarah F, and that keeps the skis really fluorinated and really fast. The way we were calculating uh, Rusty's runs today is that uh, uh, there's 1,500 vertical, and we're tracking the vertical footage, and he's doing the vertical footage about uh, at a rate of about one run every two minutes and 45 seconds, about run 11 runs per half hour, or 22 runs per hour. I've known Rusty for a long time. We've competed together in Powder 8. He's done the 24 hours of Aspen. When he says he's gonna do something, you can never bet against him. He's just, when he puts his mind to it, he's set. There's no stopping him at all. 
And I don't think I'd bet against him either, folks. Rusty's already completed close to 100,000 vertical feet and is looking good. You can really tell he's done a lot of training for this attempt. Well, Skiing-wise, the way I get in shape for this is I've been out doing a lot of high-speed runs on downhill skis, trying to get used to long skis and feeling comfortable on long skis, and, and just basically skiing around, skiing a lot of vertical and skiing fast as many days as I can. Let's take a break from our skiing for a look around the Big Sky Ski and Summer Resort. Big Sky is really a great mountain for all skiing levels, for all abilities. We have uh, upper level expert terrain, extreme terrain, with the Lone Peak, the gullies, the Kular, the South Face. We have fantastic groomed runs for the cruisers and the really nice beginning terrain for families, children. So it's a well-rounded all-area skier. Being a European and uh, I have skied in a lot of ski areas. Uh, I'm here now since 14 years and there's a reason why I chose Big Sky. I think it's, it's a really high quality living place and uh, I think our guests feel the same way. Another great reason uh, why Big Sky is such a great place is its location. We're near Yellowstone Park, so you can experience Yellowstone Park in the winter with the snowmobiling. Uh, there's also some great fly fishing rivers right nearby and some people really like that. And uh, we have the Teton National Park nearby, so it's, it's for, for everybody something we have here. When our guests leave Big Sky, I think they take home a nice feeling of Western hospitality, uh, an uncrowded area, great scenery, and a nice memory. And uh, a lot of our guests come back year after year because they like to experience that uh, every so often. Rusty skiing today on the Bighorn Run, right here at Big Sky. The run is a little over a mile long, and it's ideal because Bighorn has a 1,500-foot vertical drop with just one sweeping arch turn. Rusty's averaging over 70 miles an hour, and when he reaches the bottom, crew members quickly grab his skis and hustle him into the chopper. Well, we just broke 100,000 vertical feet, and it's only, uh, heck, about 9.30 in the morning, and we can go until 5 or 6 at night, so... Uh, hate to say it, but I think the world record's gonna fall big time. Snow Adventures will return with the conclusion of Rusty's world record attempt. But first, a look at some revolutionary new shaped skis. Coming up right after this. Dust out the cobwebs. Let's give you a little memory test and go back in time. Do you remember when big headed tennis rackets first came out? Everybody was scratching their head and saying, what are these? But you know what? They did radically change the world of tennis, and here's why. The sweet spot on the racket went from this to this. Everybody's making great shots, and they're saying, big headed tennis rackets are here to stay. And so it was. Well, the story isn't all that different for shaped skis. When they first came out, everybody's thoughts were, this is a great marketing ploy, this is a gimmick. Well, no, shaped skis have dramatically changed the world of skiing, and here is professional skier Frank Silva to tell us why. Professional Frank Silva is rightly considered as one of the top 10 skiers in the United States. Along with several racing titles, Frank has also won numerous powder rate competitions with his partner, Rusty Squire. A woodworker by trade and skier by desire, Frank Silva is definitely an asset to the world of skiing. Today I'd like to talk about what's new for K2 this year. 
is the All Mountain X-15. This ski fills the void between the Merlin 4 and the Explorer. The 15.0 side cut with an aggressive, high tapered angle towards the tail allows you to keep your speed throughout the turn. It also allows good release throughout the end of the turn. K2's exclusive Smart Ski technology converts the energy into electricity and heat, and then dissipates all this energy through the light. K2 did a great job by making these skis available in a 173, a 183, a 188, a 193, and a 198. At the tip, we have 106 millimeters. At the waist, 69. And at the tail, 92. The black racing graphite base is going to provide all the speed anyone is ever going to need. Let's check out these X-15s and see what they're all about on like most people like to ski, and that's the ground. All right. Good edge hold. Wow. Yeah, nice and stable. See how quick these things are. Wow. Unbelievable. Boy, these babies know how to work. So easy. Turn on a dime, and they'll give you a nine cent change. Yeah, a little bit of cut up snow. No problem. Piece of cake. Man, do I like these things. Wow. Boy, what a ski. Boy, now that we ski the groom, let's go check these things out on some steep powder cut up snow. Yeah. Cut up stuff. Nice. Heel and ink. Good little quick turns. Yeah. Stable. Get them at high speed. See what they do. Nice. So if you're looking for an all-mountain ski that will rip the groomers, lay the seats, fresh powder, chunked up crud, you name it, these X-15s are the smart ticket to ride. My name is Frank Silva, and I'll see you on the slope. Snow Adventures will be right back with more of our world record skiing attempt after this. Welcome back to Snow Adventure. We are now halfway through Rusty Squire's attempt to break the world record of the most vertical feet skied in a 12-hour period. His goal, over 300,000 feet. Folks, I don't have to tell you, that is a lot of steam. Let's find out how Rusty's making out. It's now two in the afternoon and Rusty Squire has been skiing since six this morning. I think at this part of the day, the biggest consideration is uh, cramping and we're trying to keep him hydrated so that doesn't happen. We're occasionally doing some massage on his uh, quads uh, just to keep him from cramping up, keep him loose and, and he's doing pretty well. I think he's taking his second wind right now and, and uh, holding up well. Rusty is holding up well, and so is the course, thanks to a group of volunteers called Slippers. Uh, my job as a slipper is to uh, scrape the course off, get all the new snow off the course so he's got a nice surface to glide on. Um, just want to keep it pretty fast all the way down, so you want to get all that new snow that's falling out of the way. What you do is just get your skis going pretty fast, put them in a wedge, and push all the snow out of his path. As the day wears on, the job of the slippers becomes even more important because the snow is getting heavier and heavier.
In addition to ski racing and endurance events, Rusty and his partner, crew chief Frank Silva, compete in powder rate ski events around the world. Let's learn more about two of the best skiers in the world. Lead skier Frank Silva is a woodworker and the proud owner of Frank Silva Custom Woodworks in Bozeman, Montana, where he specializes in high quality cabinets and furniture. Frank's been skiing for over 28 years now and professionally for the last seven. To his credit, Frank has finished as high as fifth place at the World Championship Powder Rate competition. I get as much enjoyment out of skiing as I do woodworking. The similarities are that they both require perfection in the art of skiing and in the art of woodworking. Getting the right kind of wood and grains to match. It's just like my partner has to match me. Yeah, hi, Brian. It's me. Frank's well-matched partner, Rusty, is a stockbroker at the D.A. Davidson brokerage firm in Bozeman, Montana. In addition to being a Wall Street player, Rusty has also raced on the U.S. Pro Skiing Tour. Okay, Brian, I'll pick you up on your shares of Micron. Glad we had a chance to review the portfolio, and we'll talk with you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. You know, working at this job can be somewhat stressful, and it's one of the reasons that I enjoy powder age skiing. It allows me to get out into the mountains and enjoy the things that I love to do, which are make lots of turns in deep powder and vistic panoramas. Along with all their other achievements, Rusty and Frank have twice finished as high as second place at the United States National Powder Ray Championships. As the day draws to a close, enthusiasm among the crew runs high. Everyone sees a new world record in sight. Things are going great. Rusty's in good shape. He's strong. He's drinking a lot of fluids. The teamwork is going great. We have people at the finish taking out his skis, people at the top handing him the new skis. He's just doing great, he's having a good time. There's no doubt in my mind that uh, he could break the record and even surpass it. He was made for this kind of a thing. I think he is looking better than I've ever seen him. Really, I mean, he is skiing beautifully. And at his age, I compliment him, <laughs> believe me. And now, this is it. The culmination of an entire day's effort by over 60 people. The world record run. When Rusty Squire gets to the bottom this time, he owns it. Yeah. These runs are getting really difficult. It's, you know, going 70, 75 still down that last deep pitch. And, you know, it's, it's flat light. It's been a snowy day. Everybody's cold. I think. What I'm going to do is I'll take the record up to about 310, 315, yeah, maybe 320, somewhere in there. Go a little bit longer, and then we'll pack it in. And here it is, a new world record. Yeah, All right, baby. We're going to keep going, though. All right, huh? That feels good, we got the goal. Now it's just a matter of seeing if we can take it up a ways. I'm probably only gonna ski another 40 minutes just because I feel like I'm getting to the point where personal danger, you know, so take it down to about five o'clock and we'll shut her down and call it good. That's the goal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Unbelievable, I can't believe it, he broke the record. Not only did he just break it, but he shattered it. He beat him by like what we thought was gonna be like at 8 o'clock, he did it, was it 4.30 now? That's what's uh, three and a half hours. Unbelievable. Way to do it. Like I said, you can never bet against this guy. We asked Rusty the number one question. How are the legs? Well, the legs are pretty beat up at this point. I mean, I've, I could probably ski for another hour, but I don't really see the point in it. We, we broke the record. We did what we wanted to do, and, and I think it's uh, just time to pack it in, let everybody get a well-deserved rest and a beer. So, away we go. Our sincere congratulations to Rusty Squire, the new world record holder with 331,160 vertical feet skied in 10 hours and 15 minutes. From everybody here at Snow Adventures, way to go, Rusty. Way to go.
Well, folks, can you believe it? Rusty Squire actually did it. He broke a world record right here on Snow Adventures. I say this in the most positive of ways. What an animal. Oh, let's talk about the dynamics. 1,500 vertical feet every two minutes and 40 seconds. And to add to that, the average speed, about 70 miles per hour. Now, imagine falling going at that clip. Oh, you're in some serious trouble. Here's another positive side to this whole event. All the money that was generated went to organizations that help kids with cancer. And that's something we can all get behind. Okay, folks, that does it for this edition of Snow Adventures. I'm David Sparks saying so long. We will see you somewhere in the mountains next time for more Snow Adventures. Bye-bye, everybody.